What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today, I want to reveal the only tip that you need to know in order to master organization in Blueprint. With this tip, you will be able to create hundreds of blueprints and connect them all together very easily without even thinking about it. And do you know what it is? Organizing your blueprint classes. Now, first of all, what is a blueprint class? Well, think of it as a template for creating blueprints. It defines what an actor can do and what properties it has. For example, a weapon class can have properties like damage, ammo count, and fire rate. But once you have that class created, which we can refer as a parent class, you can create many weapons based on that template, aka parent class. This is the secret of organization in blueprints, and let's see how we can implement this in Unreal Engine 5. Let's say that for our game we want to create multiple animals. Well, what we would do would be to create a parent class called animal. This is the main class and it will contain the basic properties as the walk speed, a base mesh, which will be of course the model of this animal. It would contain the states and so much more. Of course, this class can be as big as we want it to be. But once we have our parent class defined, we can create subclasses or child classes. And this can be the actual animals themselves. So for example, a lion. This can be a subclass of animal. So all of these properties such as speed, the mesh, and the states will be applied into lion. Therefore, you would only need to modify some parameters. For example, set that speed to 50 or then set the mesh to be the lion model other than set these states to be you know just uh, imagine passive or aggressive or whatever you want it's just super easy and we can repeat this process for all of our animals for example we could also go ahead and have a horse now we could go ahead and create a child class of a horse and then we will set the values to be a bit higher we would change the mesh to be the horse and then simply we would change the state to be, you know, whatever, also passive or whatever we want, right? So this is the ultimate tip that you need to implement in Unreal Engine 5 in order to go ahead and organize all your blueprints and make your lives easier. And then also be able to expand this game and add as many animals as you want. So let's see how we can do this. I just want to let you know that I just released a new free ebook that you can download for beginners on how to master Unreal Engine 5, so I'll be linking that in the description. With that said, let's continue with the video. So in Unreal Engine, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder and call this animals. And here's where we're gonna have all of these blueprints. So now what I can do is right click and create a new blueprint class. As you can see, we have a nice button into it. And as you can see, we can pick a parent class. This is exactly what we're doing, but of course, we want to first of all create the initial parent class and we don't have an animal class created yet. So what we can do is take another parent class, which will be the parent class of our parent class, if that makes sense. It's gonna be the ultimate beginning of that tree that we just created. So in this case, the best parent class slash template that we can select for this animal blueprint is gonna be the character because, well, it is a pawn that has the ability to work around and this is gonna be the best thing. So let's select character and let's put in BP underscore and then animal and that's it. That's all what we need. Now inside of animal, what we can do is make sure that we have a mesh defined, which we already have, and we could put in an animal. In this case, I don't have an animal, but you get the idea. This could be our animal model and we can have, for example, a cube just by default. Now, then we would want to define all of the parameters. For example, the speed, as I mentioned, and this can be, for example, a float. And we can also go ahead and set the uh, state of this animal. So this could be state, and this could be a simple, uh, you know, just a string, compile, and we could set this to be on passive for now, by default, and so on. And in here is where we, you know, would implement all of the logic for, you know, moving around and all that stuff and that's it so this animal would technically work i mean of course we haven't implemented any code just some basic parameters as an example but this animal would work if we implemented everything that we would need so the only thing left to do will be to actually create 
the individual animals and update those parameters, the ones that we need. So it's as easy as right clicking and creating a child blueprint class and then just rename it. Now there's another way which is to go ahead and right click, go to blueprint class and then expand all classes and then simply search for animal and there it is, BP animal. This is the one that we created. We can also create a child from here. So we can name this BP underscore animal underscore and then lion because it will be the child class of lion. And then as you can see, we already have our cube. And if we go to class defaults, we have, if we scroll down, the speed and the state variables. It's like magic. They're being, you know, inherited from our parent class to all of our subclasses. So in here, we could update the speed to be 200 because it's faster. And then instead of passive, whatever else, right? It doesn't matter. This is an example. We could also change the mesh to be this. Imagine that this was a lion and you know we would go ahead and drag our lion and boom it will simply work by just updating what it needs to be updated if that makes sense and we can repeat this process for every single you know animal that we want to have in our game and of course we could even go a step further with blueprint nodes and make sure that our logic can be modified and you know depending on the state it will do one thing or another and you know just make sure that it's fully customizable from to go now as you can see from our child we are actually calling the parents behavior on the event grass so for example the begin play calls the parent begin play and the parent begin play doesn't do anything but if i was to put in for example print string over here and remember this is only on the parent not on the lion and on the wild i only have the lion but when i press play as you can see we have hello the big widget is kind of on the way but it was saying hello that's because in our line, we're calling the parent begin play and the parent begin play actually executes the string, as you can see. So that's it, guys. If you want to see how this is actually implemented, what you can do is check out one of my big tutorials where you can learn more on how to actually implement it into a real case a scenario. With that said, if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it. You could like the video and subscribe to my channel. And now, yes, with all I said, bye bye.